Hi, I'm Sam from Cinch and this is the Mini Electric Cooper S. So the Cooper S badge on the back of this Mini Electric obviously signifies that it's a sporty car, it's a hot hat. And we love the typical Cooper S, the petrol powered car. This car obviously has to be sporty and it has to be eco. So it's got to be fun and environmentally friendly. It's a challenging thing to do, obviously. But today we're here at Rockingham because we're going to find out how it stacks up and whether it can do those things equally and brilliantly. Let's take a closer look. So as far as the Mini Cooper SE design goes, well, it's kind of business as usual here, stuff we recognize from the normal models. However, one big change, there's no front grille. Over here is a big fluorescent yellow section with a big E there, just to symbolize that this thing doesn't have an engine on here. It has loads of electric technology, but you get the same cool lights, you get the oval day running lights, spotlights down there. And actually quite a cool and unique feature is the, the wheel design here. They hark back to the concept that Mini produced a few years ago to highlight its electric intentions. They've got a unique design. And uh, when it's spinning around, you do notice the difference in that. It creates quite a cool pattern. So uh, that's quite fun and funky. Fluorescent again, just to signify this car's status. And of course, a plug port where there normally is a petrol filler cap. Around the back, again, even more business as usual. However, you do get your E badge there and the Cooper S badge gets a fluorescent green S instead of the typical red one. And you've got the Union flag lights here, which obviously link the car back to the original British Mini. But of course, this is the very latest in Mini technology. So let's take a look inside and see what the differences are there. Now, if it looks a bit familiar in here, that's because the Mini Electric Cooper SE is basically identical to the standard cars inside. In fact, everything here is what you would get on a normal car, barring maybe the flashes of green, the starter button in the normal cars is red. Here it is in a fluorescent yellowy green. And I think to many buyers, that's a good thing. Really, what the selling point of this car is, is the fact that it's just normal. It's just exactly what you'd expect. So if you want a Mini, if you like the funky, fun interior that these cars have, and I must say they are really funky and fun, and I, and I don't think you would ever get bored of the design theme in these Minis, if you want that plus an electric motor, I mean, this is obviously gonna be the car of your dreams. Doesn't have the biggest screens, doesn't have the most impressive tech, but it just feels really cool and really very fashionable. Also, the seating position is really good as well. I mean, the standard Mini, it's a perfect seating position. You sit nice and low, the steering wheel's right in front of you in the perfect position. The seats are very comfortable, very supportive. They look great, loads of lumbar support in the back and loads of side support here. So if you do choose to go around the corners in a slightly more enthusiastic manner, you're held into the seat very well. You can have your armrests here. Everything is really well thought out. And the electric mini, because most of the hardware for the electric stuff is up in the front rather than underneath us like it is in other electric cars, it means they haven't had to lift the interior or anything like that. Everything is as it normally is. Same goes for the tech in the infotainment screen as well. You've got all the same menus, all these bespoke and funky and fun colors and everything like that. It feels very youthful. It's a proper four seater. The seats in the back have never been the most spacious, but they are proper, proper seats in the back. So there's no reason why you and your mates couldn't jump in the car and zip around town, not having to visit any petrol stations. So it's been a while since I've been in a Mini Cooper S on track and I've never driven an electric Mini on circuit, but we're here at Rockingham to see what this car's like in all road manners. First, let's just see how it feels when we stick it through the different drive modes. Now there is a eco mode. You can actually switch it into green and then there's a green plus, which increases the amount of regenerative technology being used. When you come off the accelerator, the car really slows itself down. It's quite an aggressive amount of braking actually, and it allows you to do one pedal braking, which is quickly becoming quite a common thing across electric vehicles. But if you find that that slowdown is too aggressive, I mean, it's literally pushing me out of my seat when I let off the accelerator there. If you find that a little bit too aggressive, you can switch into a slightly more middling green mode. Still pretty aggressive on slowdown, but the accelerator pedal is just a bit quicker. It's just easier to manage, it means you still get the regenerative technology. You're still topping up the battery when you slow down, but you're not rocking back and forth quite as much. It's a slightly more normal driving manner. Now, the Achilles heel of the Mini Electric is that it's got a 110 mile range and that's actually you know less than half some of the other cars in this category however the mini is lighter and the balance is more typical of a normal car and obviously most of these cars spend their life in the city where people on average are doing way less than 20 miles per day so really for the average driver you probably could get away with just charging one of these once a week and living your life quite happily not really having to worry about anything the battery itself is a 36 kilowatt hour battery as well so it charges pretty quickly uh, you can plug it into your conventional chargers at home but obviously your fast charger is where you're going to get the fastest charge times you can top it up in as little as 30 minutes um, and that's obviously not till full, that's taking it up just to, to a usable range. 
when it comes to the car's performance. Now, it's got just over 180 horsepower, but the key trait to really emphasize this car's performance is the torque. It's got 270 pound foot of torque, and torque is really what signifies the advantage this car has over the normal Cooper S, the petrol model. This thing is just so much more effortless when you put your foot down. It just feels so, so much more senior when you are just suddenly asking for power without giving it any prior warning. The front end of the car, the steering is quite responsive. It's really quick. And the car just feels really familiar to me. And that's mainly because most of the electric hardware is up front. So the weight of the car is mostly concentrated on the nose, just like it is in the conventional petrol mini. And that means that you've got the same quick reacting front end and a slightly lighter back end. It doesn't feel super, super hunkered down as well. It's not stuck to the ground. It's not really hard riding. Yeah, okay, it's definitely not the most cushioned car of the class. I'm just gonna put a wheel on a curb there. You can feel the bumps and you can feel the ridges, but that's really because this is a Cooper S and it has the sportiness built into the structure and the suspension settings. If I put it back now into a more normal mode, we're in mid, if I let off the accelerator, the car still regenerates a bit, but nowhere near as much. If I put it in sport, suddenly I feel the car feel a lot more eager. It's a lot more energetic. It's asking me and saying, come on, come on, put your foot down. And if I follow those commands and I go into a corner as you might do if you were on a track day in a Mini Cooper S, and you start to put your foot down, it's pretty quick. It builds very smoothly, so you're not massively actually aware of the speed until you look down at the speedo and then you realize that hey we're doing quite a lot of speed right here there's no usual signals like a gear change or even really much in the way of noise it's really a very quiet uh, powertrain there's not really any noise being pumped through the speakers so you can uh, you can have any signals for speed there's a little bit of road noise minis are typically very small cars so there's not much between you and the wheels the front wheel's just over there, the back wheel's just over there. It makes it super easy to place the car, it makes it really easy to park as well. You get reversing camera as well to make that even easier. But ultimately, what makes this car attractive and what I think most people who like this car will like is the fact that it is just very mini. Probably if you're looking to buy a mini, you're gonna be looking at the mini range exclusively because the mini is so unique. And obviously, if you wanted to buy the most eco-friendly mini, this is the answer, this is the one to buy. But is it the most fun Mini because of all that torque and the fact that you've got instantaneous responses? Should we see? Let's find out on track. Let's turn off the stability control systems. We're in a safe and controlled environment here. We're at Rockingham Speedway. So there are some really fun corners on this infield circuit that we're using here. Let's just see how the car feels. Does it feel as composed? And, oh, straight away it does. Does it feel like it wants to go around corners? Yeah, it does. Oh, that feels really good, actually. It feels properly, properly sporty. Brilliant steering, really good steering. Nice quick reactions. So there's a bit of roll, but it's actually quite a useful tool to tell you how fast you're going around the bend. It's, it's a bit of communication from the car. Oh, it's a really nice front end on this car. Good, good accelerator response. The car feels quick, feels darty. Oh, and if you go in and you lift off the accelerator as you turn in, and you've pushed a bit of weight over the front of the car. As I said, all the weight is at the front, or most of the weight is at the front. So as soon as you do that, the back of the car just happily, happily lets you tuck the nose in. Yeah, it can just play with that balance all the way through. It's really good fun, actually. You know what, if you, if you had the range in this car, I could see this car being a really fun thing to take on track all the time. But of course, the focus is the city driving. That won't stop me trying to attack this hairpin with a little bit more vigor, though. <laughs> bit of oversteer there and really good really good grip on the front as I put my foot down on the exit there so it's a really nice handling car does do the hot hatch thing really very well and very easily as well not much effort from me just throwing the car around and it does exactly what I want if we switch it back now to a normal mode we put it back in what what BMW Mini calls mid drive it in a bit more of a typical manner just calm easy to live with Nice place to be, good looking car as well, and of course, eco credentials are really, really good. Yeah, I'm a big fan of this. If you live in a city, I can totally see the appeal of this car. So while it might not be the technically strongest car in this class, it's a model that pulls at your heartstrings. It's fun to drive, it's great to look at, and it's a really nice place to be. 
it just nails the mini brief. And obviously it comes with those added eco credentials because it's an electric car. So I think we can all agree that this is a big success from that point of view. And we're gonna see plenty of these cars out on the roads and all the better for it. Now, if you enjoyed what you just watched, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and of course, like the video. See you soon.